Thank you for, for, uh, for coming and attending this session. Hopefully it'll be interesting. Uh, just as a preliminary remark, one of the things that we've come to learn in the last few years is that there is a movement, in, or not just in Spain or in Europe, but internationally. And we call it the homosexual legal agenda. And it's not just about same-sex marriage, it's about advancing a political, philosophical, economic, and social uh, agenda and uh, the ramifications of that agenda and its consequences on rights of conscience are something that should concern all of us. Now, our opening plenary speaker is Mr. Alan Sears. Regrettably, Mr. Sears is not here. His plane was delayed by about three or four hours out of New York. And uh, but the good news is, is that I have a speech. And I am going to first let me introduce Mr. Sears, and then I am going to become Mr. Sears. I'll become his avatar or his clone. Alan Sears is a former federal prosecutor in the Reagan administration. Uh, he's president and founder and CEO of the Alliance Defense Fund. He uh, uh, was a prominent uh, prosecutor and public official with the Reagan administration and the first Bush administration in Washington, D.C. He is, I mentioned, he's the founder of Alliance Defense Fund, which is, which is a legal, international legal ministry that defends the right to speak and hear the gospel through strategy, training, funding, and litigation. Alliance Defense Fund has about 170 employees. We have offices in uh, Vienna, Austria, Delhi, India, Mexico City, New York City, Washington, D.C., and throughout the United States and elsewhere. Uh, Mr. Sears was the founder of that organization in 1973. And uh, now, Mr. I want to introduce Mr. Alan Sears. Now, I am going to walk to the podium and pretend that I am Mr. Sears. Well, it's such an honor to be with you today. Buenos dias, amigos. A few weeks ago in Istanbul, another international congress adjourned, one made up of 300 youths from 36 nations of Europe. That congress adopted numerous resolutions and ended with instructions that each one, of, that each one be sent to the governments of the members of the Council of Europe demanding, demanding that they change the world you and I live in dramatically. There are four pages of demands call on all European countries to grant same-sex couples the same rights as traditional married couples. What's more, the Congress proclaims with no basis that there is no, quote, no significant difference between children raised by same-sex couples and heterosexual couples. They say this despite decades of research and findings, objective findings, to the contrary. To assuage the concerns uh, of uh, the Youth Congress, uh, they issued demands uh, that hundreds of laws be changed, that a, a redefinition of the family occur, that a massive media campaign occur to promote what they call, quote, equality. That is, the reconditioning of children through school programs and the amending of the European Charter to, to define marriage as any two persons, including mothers and sons, fathers and daughters, and any two persons who choose to call themselves married. All of that just to enthrone what they call, quote, equality for a form of sexual behavior and for those who practice it. This is a, a behavior and a relationship, as we all know, that's incapable of giving life or allowing its practitioners to even reproduce themselves. They want laws that would impact the continent immediately and immensely. The youth at the Congress actually believe that applying legal force and sanctions against those who oppose such laws will produce more, quote, equality. But they clearly do not understand how such sanctions will diminish liberty for everyone and eventually reduce true freedom and equality even for those who practice such activities. Throughout history, utopians, usually on the left, have sought to reorder society by forging draconian new laws and forcing new behaviors on people. Often done in the name of equality, which really meant the subjugation of individuals and families and society, 
to the state and the control of the, the individuals and the families by the state, more often than not, these young utopians see their revolutions turn to violence and destruction with many forms of punishment imposed on all those who oppose the fabrication of their new world order. Usually this is because the so-called new rights and new order pressed by the agitators are not about human rights or liberty at all, but about the utopians wanting to defy the beliefs or plunder, plunder and take away the possessions of others. And the end result, sadly, is less freedom for you, for them, for everyone. For, quote, where equality is enthroned, a writer recently said, freedom is destroyed. It is in the face of such enormous confusion that we gather here today to address the challenges that are entangling all of us in each of our respective nations, and we are, we are here seeking to forge a positive response. I'm honored by this invitation. Remember, I'm Mr. Alan Sears, not Benjamin Bull. I'm honored by this invitation by the distinguished company of thoughtful international leaders in this room today. We all bring many perspectives to the table. I come here as a husband, a father, and a CEO, but, but primarily as a, an attorney who's been involved in legal matters in Europe, the Pacific, the Americas, and around the world since the 1980s. I'm here today on behalf of Alliance Defense Fund, not just to stand before you, but to stand with you as we face together and stand up to the forces that are so determined to destroy life, to redefend marriage, to redefine marriage, and the meaning of the family, and to limit our, your freedom to daily, to daily express and live out your faith. Sadly, in your and my home nations, that battle has become all but synonymous with the homosexual legal agenda. Let me give you a brief sampling of the sheer spectrum of cases all related to that agenda that the Alliance Defense Fund has litigated all over the world the last few years. You will note that, quote, equality and tolerance is demanded in the name of the agenda. It is one-sided and persecution and prosecution result. In New Jersey, our client Ocean Grove Methodist Camp Meeting Association, a private religious organization, uh, like many of those represented here, faced tax and human rights legal charges and tax revocations because they denied the use of their private worship facility for a lesbian wedding. In New Mexico, a young lady, 20 years old, named Elaine uh, Hugan. Uh, she's a young Christian photographer. She's a private business person. She was fined $7,000 for politely declining to be a photographer at a lesbian, quote, commitment service. Julia Ward is an honors counseling student at Eastern Michigan University. She's a student like many of you here. She was kicked out of her master's program because faced with a potential client wanting advice to improve, quote, his same-sex relationship, which clashed with Julia's religious convictions, she asked to refer the client to another counselor. That's exactly what the university had taught her to do with values conflicts. However, they kicked her out of school anyway for, the fo for following what she believed. Jonathan Lopez, a Los Angeles City College student, was called a, quote, fascist bastard by his professor who refused even to grade Jonathan's assignment because in a classroom presentation, the young man defended marriage as the union between one man and one woman, just like many of you would. At the University of Illinois, Professor Ken Howell, a teacher, was discharged, meaning he was fired, for truthfully answering a question on Catholic teachings about homosexual behavior in a class on Catholic doctrine. In Kentucky, Larry Dombrowski, a federal aviation supervisor, was reprimanded, suspended without pay, and transferred to another state for politely discussing his faith-based objections to same-sex marriage in a private conversation with coworkers during off-duty time. Canadian authorities actually tried to tell a Canadian pastor, Stephen Boisson, that he, was, that he could never, for life, now this is a court telling him for life, he could not criticize publicly or privately engaging in any negative speech about homosexual behavior. 
This was after we wrote a letter to the editor that was published in the local newspaper condemning homosexual behavior and promoting traditional marriage. In Sweden, as many of you all, you all know, Pastor Aki Green faced prison for sharing the gospel words on sexual morality from the pulpit of his own church. These cases, which are just a sample, uh, and these cases which threaten even the livelihoods of the people involved, seek to limit the freedom of expression and attack the rights of conscience, and they reveal the extremism of the homosexual legal agenda, an extremism that seeks out and persecutes any soul in any corner of society who refuses to publicly embrace or aggressively promote homosexual behavior. The good news is and it, that it's not too late, that we have won many, in fact, we've won most of the cases that I just walked through against this, this uh, onrushing agenda. But we cannot win if we don't all stand up and fight and stand with those who are standing up and fighting it. Our leaders, our churches, our children must be made to understand this. You are, you are, not, being encouraged to you are not being encouraged to show tolerance or extend equality by promoting the homosexual agenda. You are being ordered to do it, you are being commanded to do it in violation of your conscience and ordered to do it by setting aside your deepest beliefs and being ordered to betray the most basic truths God has planted in the hearts of every man. But in the course of the now hundreds of cases the Alliance Defense Fund has fought involving this homosexual agenda, one thing is certain. There is no room for compromise with those who would call evil good. To accomplish their purposes, those pressing this legal agenda have seduced much of the popular culture, as we know. They've trampled ballot boxes, they've bullied faith-based voters, they've co-opted government leaders and legislatures, they've assaulted courts in countries all over the world with their unrelenting demands based on their sexual appetites and desires. We are engaged in a battle of laws, words, ideas and emotions, but most of all in a spiritual battle between the, excuse me, those who take God at his word and those who would twist, ignore, belittle, even outlaw the truth of scripture to secure their own agenda. To oppose that agenda is to be labeled, quote, intolerant, and seemingly there is nothing worse in our culture today than being labeled intolerant. All too many people of faith fear nothing so much as to be called a bigot. Or, and what is a bigot if not someone who looks on others with, quote, intolerance? Of course, nowadays, intolerance is a term that can only be applied to people of faith, like you and me. Those advocating the homosexual agenda, no matter how cruel and intolerant, are immune from the charge. And the sad truth is that, in the eyes of most of the media and many in society, People of faith will always be bigots because we are called to put faith before feelings, God's will before Ben's pleasures, and the urgings of our conscience before the propaganda of licentious culture. If your conscience bothers you, our opponents simply expect you to suppress it and kill it. What they tragically fail to understand is that the same conscience that shows us that homosexual behavior is self-destructive and wrong encourages us to reach out with love and kindness and forgiveness to those who practice such behavior. Conscience, after all, is what urges us to look beyond the rule of man, to follow what eternal law, what eternal law is written on our hearts by the Creator Himself. It is that law, the law of God, the law of love, and the law of life that tells us we can't settle for same-sex marriage. That we can't endorse, that we cannot endorse schemes and other sex partner subsidies in the workplace or by the, govern or by the governments uh, for those engaged in homosexual behavior. That we can't stand by while they teach our children that homosexual behavior is legitimate and honorable and good. Nor can we stand by when they distort historic Jewish and, Christ and Christian faith which teaches that while we oppose this destructive behavior and this agenda, that we still uphold and respect the dignity of every human being created imagio Deo. To do any of these things is to pretend not only to society, but to those actually engaged in homosexual behavior themselves, that these actions eventually destroy them. The message we are called to convey is a message of mercy, 
but it's a, but it's a mercy, but it's, but it's a mercy those so bent on self-destruction are trying desperately not to hear. They are willing to do almost anything to silence the messengers who would lead them out of darkness and into the light of God's word. Obviously, these issues cross all national borders. Almost everyone in the world today, people of faith under, are under relentless legal attack for doing what, what under God they must do, protect life, preserve marriage and the family, and defend religious freedom. We must stand up, speak up, litigate, engage in public policy on the cultural debate as never before. And when we do, let me share a word of hope, a little light I see from my home across the pond. In my country, 31 of the 50 states have now enacted constitutional amendments protecting marriage as the union of one man and one woman. This has occurred despite tens of billions of dollars from Hollywood and the secular media and the secular media's relentless campaign to redefine marriage. In my country, the United States, more than half a million people, including key religious leaders from many faiths and denominations, have now signed the Manhattan Declaration, an important document affirming their personal commitment to work tirelessly to protect life, families, marriage, and religious freedom, and to not obey unjust laws that decree otherwise. In my country, religious leaders from across the spectrum have recognized the unprecedented dangers posed by the Obamacare abortion mandates. This government decree orders Christians and other religious organizations, ministries, and churches to underwrite the cost of abortion-inducing drugs and sterilization. Bad as it is, the mandate has awakened millions of people of faith long asleep, and now Jews, Christians, and others across America are increasingly alert to how broad and deep the efforts have become to silence the church and bend it to the will of those pr promoting a leftist agenda. In my country, many of those same people of faith are realizing the dangers posed worldwide by an organization called Planned Parenthood, a business built on the deaths of tens of millions of children executed in their mother's wombs. For perhaps the first time in Planned Parenthood's his nearly 100-year history, serious legal forces are at work throughout our country to expose their illicit business dealings and true merciless agenda. And I'm thankful to say that Alliance Defense Fund is leading the effort uh, in this work. Pray, uh, pray to see the terrible organization brought to its knees, that organization being Planned Parenthood. Perhaps the most hopeful news I can give you is to remind you once again that you are not alone. Our Lord promised that he would never leave you or forsake you. And as a leader of the, the Alliance Defense Fund, I have the extraordinary privilege of meeting every day men and women and children from across the planet of every age and background and religious persuasion, many with very limited financial resources, many who thought they were alone, many who were frightened at the prospect of standing against the legal juggernauts that exist to crush anyone who speaks up for, for life or defends marriage or tries to exercise even a little bit of religious liberty. But frightened though they were, they are finding the courage and thanks be to God to stand, to speak, to take action, to stand up for the, con for the con confusion manifest, to stand up to the confusion manifested by decrees of Congresses like the one in Istanbul, to stand up to the utopians and the totalitarian agendas. Two, if necessary, face real persecution, not because they, they nurture dreams of martyrdom, but because standing for liberty is the right and godly thing to do. Like Queen Esther, they have come to realize that God often allows difficult situations for people of faith for such a time as this. History and scripture do remind us that persecution often accompanies those who stand. Yet Jesus himself declared, let your light so shine before men that they may see it and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the time when the light of our faith must shine. The darker the persecution, the brighter our light must shine to others. Countless souls, including the very ones that oppose, torment, persecute, and despise us, including those misguided youth of Europe that just came out of that conference in Istanbul, 
are depending on the light we shine, the truth we speak, the witness we live, and the compassion we de demonstrate. As, as uh, our Bishop uh, Reja Pla yesterday said, I don't want to offend anyone, but I won't renounce speaking the truth in charity. Let us stand with the bishop, who again, who was with us yesterday. Let us preach truth and charity. We don't know the outcome of the great struggles now before us, but we know the outcome of battles in which we surrender, and we know that in the end, that God and truth will be victorious. This is as sure as the cross itself and as certain as the empty tomb. I close with the words of the prophet uh, Jehaziel, as reported in the Hebrew scriptures, who told his people, Position yourselves, stand, and see the salvation of the Lord, who is with you. Do not fear or be, dismi or to be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And as we seek to do his good work, it is my great honor on behalf of all of your fellow servants at the Alliance Defense Fund to tell you that we stand beside you, not only in spirit, but in the courtrooms around the world. Thank you for, for your faithful example. May God bless you and strengthen you and equip you mightily with his grace for the challenges and, and, important, and opportunities to come as you continue your stand. Thank you.